In the Berkshire Downs, not far from Oxford and close to the village of Harwell, where there was a wartime airfield, Britain's atomic research establishment has been set up. Pictures of this important and closely guarded place have now been released. They were taken some time ago and they show buildings inside the barbed wire perimeter. It became very widely known that Aldermaston was where Britain's nuclear weapons were being developed and so logically it was then going to become a focus for protest organisations. And in the late late 1957, the Direct Action Committee, they decided that they would organise a, a march to Aldermaston. People lent us cars and I drove the car around and then somebody loud spoke, I, I, I did. What, what we were saying is ban, uh, ban nuclear weapons, end British nuclear weapons, uh, join the Aldermaston march. So on Easter Monday we left Reading for Aldermaston where the bombs are made. The march seemed endless now, bigger than we dared to hope, big enough to make even a politician think. If anybody had told us we'd be here again in 50 years, we'd have thought that was uh, impossible. I must admit, I didn't expect to be here 50 years on from the beginning. This is my mother, Hetty Bauer. She's 102 years old. She's been on most of the Aldermaston marches since they started. We'll tell you who's really guilty. And then they all started shouting my name. You gave politicians their power. You sat back and watched the TV. You could have forced them to ban it. You could have made them agree. The lollipop? Yeah, it was what we, um, they were given out on the first Stolen Master March at Trafalgar Square. I remember marching into Slough in the sleet. It was a, an experience I never forget. It aroused people, particularly young people who had not been politically active, like myself for example. I think the enthusiasm was enormous. I mean, the fact, uh, I was a young man and I think I got caught up in, in that enthusiasm. We were together in the London Youth Choir on the first Aldermaston March. Memories. <laughs> we all thought we were going to die. There were other elements. There was a very strong sense of moral outrage. Ban the bomb! Ban the bomb forevermore! <laughs> For the first time, the Aldermaston marches started a popular movement against defence and foreign policy. And it came to, as I was here, to its height when, in protest against the Iraq War, uh, the Stop the War Coalition actually got, got three million people out. <laughs> when the American government dropped its bombs on Hiroshima and Nagasaki and the horror of it stayed with me right until now. I'm 76 now. We stood in silence to dedicate the march. We stood for a minute in silence as we used to stand on Armistice Day. But we were standing for Hiroshima and Nagasaki where 200,000 people were condemned to death in our name. There weren't even any human remains left. There were just sort of shadows burnt into the stone, you know, the sort of carbon remnants of what had been human. And the significant thing about nuclear weapons, of course, is that it's not just the immediate blast. Because of the radioactive pollution, the radiation poisoning, which comes with the splitting of the atom and therefore with the bomb, it's not something that's over. By 1950, maybe double the number of people had died as a result of radiation and radioactive fallout. And then even today, people are still dying as a consequence. 
Britain, Britain's nuclear weapons today, which are relatively small in global terms, they're eight times the size of the Hiroshima bomb. We have always um, uh, opposed the concept of uh, using nuclear weapons for any purpose at all. Trident is an absolute monstrosity. Uh, they uh, drain our resources and they bring about poverty and they bring about fear. Wasting so much money that could be used for schools, for houses, for hospitals and it's a tragic, tragic waste of money. I think it's important that people really feel that they have a duty to do something to ban these weapons. Incredibly relieved that there are young people here. I really thought we'd either all be bald or with white hair. <laughs> I hope this march today will make a new start and uh, mobilize people. Security means living together in human peace, charity, love and justice. And that's what we're here about today. And one day we'll go through that fence as at Greenham Common. It's an open space now, you can wander about it. One day Aldermaster will be a nature reserve or perhaps a place where they make wind pumps for decent energy. So thanks very much. You can never give up on a solution of an unsolved problem. This is an unsolved problem, but it can be soluble. The, ro the, the, the route to solving it exists. It can be pursued. It can be done. Men and women can